Cursed Trials presented by Team Archon. My name is Frodan. I'm joined by Kibler. We have our fourth match of the winner's bracket for Group A. It's Strife Grow from Cloud9 versus Orange from Team Archon. And uh, it's, a, it's, it's an interesting match because we have similar lineups, but maybe they choose to build it differently. I'm joined by Crip, who's been casting on the action. How have you been enjoying yes. the tournament so far, Crip. man? You're not joined by Kibler. Did I say Kibler? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's all right. It's all right. Um, looks like these players are playing exactly okay. the same classes here. <laughs> both, both shaman, both druid, both rogue. Um, I'm, I'm pretty excited to see more of this rogue deck. Um, the, the miracle rogue, I think from Amnesiac, showed a pretty dominant performance. I think it was the only deck that he won outright with. And um, yeah, same, just seemed super, super solid. Uh, I also think there's a lot of stuff that's possible with rogue. So I, I think it's. It's good, but not even limited to just Miracle Rogue. So I'm curious to see if uh, if Strife Crow or Orange uh, will choose to explore that side of things. So far, very standard stuff from Druid, very standard stuff from Shaman, though. Um, we've seen, uh, I think, one of the Druids, I think it was uh, maybe Tice's Druid deck that had the Violet Teacher? Or was it? Yeah, I think it was yes, Tice's it Druid was. deck. He had yeah, Violet Teacher into Wild Growth, Wild Growth, yeah. uh, into Ragnaros, so... Well, Strife Crow is one of those players that has lived and died by the Violet Teacher. I think he was one of the first players to play the, the Violet Teacher style token Druid deck like years ago. So I'm I'm kinda curious if he if he goes back to his roots in this case, because I mean it definitely seemed like a good option from what we've seen so far. Yeah, Strife Crow was one of the first to really experiment with that, as well as a few other players. I remember it made a debut with like Imp Master and Power of the Wild. Like that was like how it first started, and then people really refined it a little bit more. Um, nowadays, with things like Living Roots, it feels mm -hmm. like it gives you more opportunities for bigger Wombo board buildings, right? Like, you can have Vibe yeah. Teacher, Living Roots, Power of the Wild, and all of a sudden, it's like a 4-6 with, like, 5 or 4 one ones. I don't know the actual thing, but... And pretty, we haven't really insane. seen much in terms of board class. We've seen like zero Revengers. We've seen like zero Geddon's. We've seen like zero of like really any kind of board clear. Actually, yeah. the only deck that has had a decent board clear is the Aggro Shaman, where some players have chosen to run a yeah, Lamental Destruction. destruction. Yeah. <laughs> we, well, we did see a Brawl. We did see a Brawl. Oh, uh, that's true. That's true. Yeah, Just but that was life. from the player that went 0 6. So. Mm. Uh, not not exactly sure. I actually messaged Eloise to see like if that she played Dra uh, Dragon Warrior again three times and lost to see if Dragon Warrior went one in ten collectively. <laughs> um, but who knows? Maybe it's variants. Maybe Dragon Warrior is just not good against Druid, and everyone's bringing Druid, so uh, you're you're bound to have a bad time. Uh, focusing back onto the rogue, you said there's a lot of different types of rogue that can uh, originate, and I, I agree, except for the one caveat that I think because Death Rattles disappear from the metagame. The Unearthed Raptor Rogues still don't have a chance right now. I think uh, you lose some of your best that you can uh, copy off yeah. of. Yeah. You lose the eggs, you lose the Haunted Creepers, you lose a lot of like the powerful stuff early on. That gives you insurance on the egg. Ideally, you would use it on like Sylvanas, or if you're playing like super late game stuff, you can you can get away with it. But even Belcher and Shredder, like all these different things are so good with the Raptor you can synergize with. They're I all don't I don't think it's totally dead. Um, like when I when I played the deck, I would I was still very happy whenever I'd hit a loot hoarder with it. Like it's still a three mana three four. Um, you could curve from a loot hoarder. Uh, I don't know if there's much else in terms of death rattles before it. Mm -hmm. um, like sometimes you you siphon like a death rattle from a leper gnome, but that's not really the card you want <laughs> yeah. in that deck. Uh, yeah. So it gets a bit tricky, uh, but. I don't know. It is a very powerful card. Uh, if you can get it off one of the late game death rattles like Sylvanas, like maybe Sneeds, I would be I would yeah. be totally surprised to see the deck. But if someone did bring the deck, I wouldn't be surprised to see it win because we've seen a lot of the slow paced kind of like grindy battles. We saw just how valuable a death rattle from a Sylvanas was in one of the games already. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a totally different game. Um, surprises are going to happen. Certainly. And, uh, you know, I don't think we'll see much surprises from the Shaman and Druid. These were the two classes that I think we predicted to see the most because they lose the least out of any of these decks. Um, so that's not going to be surprising. But if both these guys come to the conclusion that Miracle Rogue is good, that's pretty cool. And, and it's because, you know, Lothab's gone. Uh, that really messes things up. And for the Rogue, at least. 
Uh, you can usually block them to spells. But, you know, it, it's, it is also interesting because I know Orange is like a really big Miracle player, but Shrifeco was never really that big into it. I think he just played Miracle because it was really strong back then. In the yeah. Day. Um, yeah. And, everyone did. <laughs> yeah, everyone did. And I know Shrifeco has specifically said that he doesn't like combo decks in general. He really likes... He really likes big control decks like his Grinder Mage or other weird stuff like that. Because when he played Patron, when he played Miracle, um, and even to a certain extent the Combo Druid, he just doesn't like the fact that the game can end in one turn with like 25 damage. Um, and he's like a particularly outspoken person about that. So it'd be surprising to see that like he's like, ah, I'm going to go back to Miracle as a default thing. But who knows, maybe it's good. I think Strife Crow is actually one of like the... the the last pro players to take upon learning how to play Patron Warrior. I think, like, after Patron Warrior dominated the entire game for, like, four months, Strafker's like, ah, I guess I'll learn to play this thing. Like, yeah, up until absolutely. then, he was beating patrons with, like, Murloc Knights and stuff, from what I remember. Yeah, mid-range, uh, mid-range stuff, so... <laughs> I mean, he, he, that's like his favorite deck, I think. He told me Paladin, mid-range Paladin was his favorite deck in Hearthstone history or something like that. Like, he really loved the quartermaster element of it. But then as, you know, cards started making mid-range and eventually Secret Paladin really dominant, you know, that eventually shifted. I don't actually know what his go-to decks are these days. Um, yeah. Well, I think they're, they're pretty standard. Mage. Yeah. Oh, even then, I don't know. I think in the tournament format... Um, in the regular tournament format, things have been very one-dimensional for just about uh, everybody, um, where a lot of just the powerful ladder decks seem to see a lot of play. Uh, that's why I'm so excited about some of the changes that are coming up in the game. Yeah, there's definitely, I mean, if there's anything that we've seen, it's like, there's definitely some tools here that are improving that are not really commonly seen uh, in the metagame right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's definitely going to shake up a little bit. However, we can definitely see that there's some noticeable holes in some classes and overwhelming forces in others. Uh, no pun intended from the Druid and the Shaman. Uh, Elemental Destruction is actually a pretty big deal in the Shaman Mirror. Um, because one of the things that you can just lose straight up is if you have no answer to board. And mm -hmm. your opponent just has like enough damage dealt to the face where they can burn you out. Uh, the most important thing that you can really do is have plays turn one in this matchup. And both of them do. So, so already shamed up to be a very quick game here. Yeah. That Tunnel Trog is going to be it, though, isn't it? That's going to go unchecked. And this is Orange's Tunnel Trog. So he he can definitely go super far. I, I like this to keep Feral Spirits as a potential threat. And if your opponent removes it, then you can just play Totem Golem as if nothing ever happened. And then all of a sudden, Tunnel Trog is going to be super, super strong. Mm. You have a, you also have Leopard Gnome to fill out a one-mana slot on turn three. Yeah. So it feels like thinking... you can fall for I think in this matchup, you probably have to use Lava Burst on a minion. Yeah, it actually does happen once in a while. So, You're not wrong. So would you consider Lava Burst here? Because it accomplishes basically the same thing as, as, the, as the Feral Spirits, but I feel like the Feral Spirits are much better later on. Hmm. Uh, yeah, Feral Spirits actually does have use later on as well, like you said, uh, primarily because you can stop Doomhammer from having a large effect, assuming you can do something like Elemental Destruction, Feral Spirits, and even like Lava Shock immediately afterwards, so that way you have Mana Crystals. And sometimes the game ends up dragging out that way, but a lot of times it does end up becoming about snowballing the board. So uh, Orange kind of does, does an immediate pivot on his strategy. You know, rather, it, he keeps his options open, but it's one of those questions of, you know, the longer you keep the coin, the more the, the the less of an impact it has, so he has to be very mindful that he has to kind of squeeze it in eventually. He didn't play Leopard Gnome though, so what do you think he might be planning next turn? Next man, next turn he has four mana. Well, three on the coin gives him four if he needs. Right, so he, he has acts up to four mana. Yeah, but he didn't coin out the Leopard Gnome, and usually you'd coin out the Leopard Gnome one turn earlier if you were going to coin it out one turn later. So. 
I guess. Oh, oh he's, he's overloaded. overloaded. Oh, he's overloaded. Oh, so okay. he's just so planning on playing, playing a three drop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that makes sense. That was that was. We really couldn't see the mana crystal bar crip. That's our excuse. <laughs> yep. Um. I think uh, lava shock first, and then coining that could lead to better results. <laughs> but you would have to lava shock first if you want to coin out two cards here. It might not be worth it though. It's probably not worth it. What's the upside of doing that? Like the 50-50 means that your Trog dies, but you can still get two damage in with Flame Juggler. Mm. Although right now, the, the health counts are so high that it kind of doesn't matter about how much damage you've dealt. Oh my god. Well, uh, that's really nice. Like, sniping a minion is so big because you know, board control is what really dictates this. Think about yeah. the early stages of Hunter vs. Hunter or even Zoo vs. Zoo. And how much of an impact those early boards determine the rest of the game. Because then, mm -hmm. like usual, one person who's lower on the health has to do the trading. And one person who's ahead can just keep hitting the face. Alright, well, here I think you're, you're going to go with the, um, with the Sir Finley into the Charger. Um, just got to play as much stuff as you can to clear up the board as best you can before the Doomhammer. Oh, Life Tap? Uh, you know, there is a case for the Priest Hero Power. Yeah, I was about to say, like, I think the Priest Hero Power is, like, legitimate because not only will it give you, put you outside of range of potential burn, you also can control the board a little bit better. Um, so it's, it's not, it's not, it's not the worst, but it is something to consider the life tap if you're running out of cards as well. I think he feels like he has enough damage because of Doomhammer, though. Like, one of the things that you're worried about is running out of damage in this matchup if you just play too much about the board. Oh, man. That Feral yeah. Spirits, though. We were saying about how good it can be against things like Doomhammer, and it's just such a, a, a wrench into things. You still gotta go for the Doomhammer, I believe. I mean, if and you don't do it. the Doom... Oh. Yeah, if you don't do the Doomhammer, it's hopeless. It's honestly hopeless. I think you're right because, well, you can also play Knife Juggler and Arcane Golem, but... Yeah, but the best case know. of that is is the same thing as having the Doom Hammer, and you'd also much rather have the Doom Hammer developed for the next turn. That's true. The only, the only reason why I say that is because you're overloaded on your mana crystals, and you might not be able to get those cards out later on, but I think you're not in a position where you can pick and choose what you want from that. So this is, let's see, 7, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 damage right now available. Uh, he's just going to slowly and pick apart the board and just use Lava Burst. And right now, it's like, as the, the Shaman player on, uh, on Shrivecrow's side, you have to like Arcane Golem into the, <laughs> into the Tunnel Trog just to survive. Yep. And you're at 4. <laughs> Effectively four, but I mean that's where the priest hero power gives you some float. But the average draw from shaman, at least the way people estimated it before, the average damage drawn was like if you round it up, it's like two, three. And otherwise, it's like two point something. So it's like even if you draw the, even if you have priest hero power, on average you're gonna get out damaged by the cards that you draw. Mm -hmm. Is it gonna happen? No. Oh, yeah, very probably, high chance. Probably, probably. Well, no, no crackle nope. though. And no! Whoa! It didn't happen. Well, he has enough. Oh wait, he only has five man next turn. Oh wait, hold on. Is there a chance for this to actually happen, man? Uh, you use Rockbiter now, right? Just in case they have another Feral Spirit. Or do you? Would you rather keep it because they might have Feral Spirit? I don't know. I don't think you're in a position to, to choose. You're, you're not beating Feral Spirit, so. Yeah, I think you're saving Rockbiter just for the fun surprise. <laughs> Very fun. Fun in quotation marks. Oh, he had six mana. That's more than enough. I apologize. I don't know why I counted five mana. It's because the seven turned seven. Mm -hmm. That's more than enough to kill it. So, wrapping up game uh, number one here. Very fast and furious. As uh, looks like we're going to see if whether or not who can get the better end of like the rogue matchups. Where, where does Rogue really fit here? Is there like one matchup that immediately stands out to you as being uh, a good for them at all? Or it just feels like their best chance is literally winning the mirror? 
Um, I think all three of these decks pair uh, close to 50% against one another. Um, I think it's just based on some of the tech choices. Like, we've seen Harrison in some rogue decks, so Harrison's going to, like, obliterate the other Shaman or the other rogue, for instance, uh, in most cases. Um, it's really hard to tell. I think Orange does have the experience with the rogue as opposed to Strife Crow. Uh, I think Orange was a very well-known actual uh, rogue player uh, when he started uh, in the competitive yes. scene. Uh, Strife Crow is, I think, much better uh, or much more well-known as a Druid player. But, uh, yeah, often playing Druid, the decisions are made for you. So it's uh, perhaps a little bit less of an impact. We will see the, the Druid versus the Shaman here. Strife Crow sends the Shaman out once again. This matchup has also been pretty close. We've seen it we've seen it won by, by, by both classes. But I feel like with this opener the, the druid has a pretty big edge. Like that that opener is just nuts. Yeah, it it looks really powerful. Cause you have so many options early on and you can follow your curve, which is like the really big thing. I like it, living roots just for board control. Trifle is gonna go back and just play the board. What what uh what Druid always struggled with in the past was early game plays. But that's what Living Roots and Innervate, Darnassus Aspirant, Wild Growth. Now there's so that's many options. Good. Gives you a lot of abilities to to have early game plays. Mm. You go with a combatant here. Uh probably. Just because the combatant gives you so much board presence Unleash with the hero power threat. And at worst, your opponent trades with the Totem Golem because he can't crackle it. And this is kind of a situation where Crackle is pretty good. He can actually uh, Flame Shock and then Rock Biter. Oh, yeah. Uh, Lava Shock, Rock Biter. Or Lava is shock. Also I always call it Flame Shock. Ah, it, it, it does the same thing. It burns people. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Same difference. No worries, Crip. That's a lot of cards to invest, though, but he did get innervated, so... It's two cards it for might two be, cards. Yeah, it it might be a reasonable decision here. Yeah, what I like about it is that the three four can then only get answered by uh, wrath, wrath or savage. Oh yeah, yeah, savage or is also, but that's also like a big sacrifice on the uh, on the druid side because savage or is the way that druid would race the uh, the shaman. Time. One of the things that you have to always be concerned about is. If you're trying to stave off the pressure from aggro, how can you flip the switch and kill them? Because the longer the game stalls out, you're still giving them chances to draw into a lava burst or a doom hammer to win the game. Face! Wow. Face. Man, that play is right out of Twitch chat. <laughs> I mean, no, if you play a new limited format in standard, some of the old principles from Hearthstone still apply here. That's a good card. Because you're probably going to have to uh, flame shock, right? Did I get it right? I think it Let's did. just call it what it really is, Flava Shock. Flava Shock, all right, we're good. Oh, Doom Hammer right on the curve here, so that way he can uh, unload his, or unlock his overloaded crystals, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Start going to town, and he has, well, hypothetically, if he could hit every turn with Doom Hammer with this Rock Biter, he would have 20... Fire the uh, he'd have but, uh, seven damage or so. Turn, turn four Emperor is a pretty big deal. Man. You know it's only two cards, though. Oh, okay, you just go for it. Forget it. I mean, <laughs> if if he was aggressive enough to go face with the uh, with the Totem Golem on turn three, he's aggressive enough to go face from this point on in the game. <laughs> 17. You put him at 17 right now. Next turn, he has access to four mana, so he can Lava Burst and Rock Biter for 15. And then he could Lava Burst past the Taunt. But this is also coming up on the turns where maybe his opponent taunts. Mm -hmm. Can he also die if he takes two damage hits, or two turns of hits from the opposing side with a Savage Roar or something? Eight, there's, just, there's just the other side, like, 
see. Okay, let's say you lava burst here. If you lava burst here, you can't play Doom Hammer next turn. So you're Doom Hammering on turn seven, and that is too late. The three turn lethal and druid would be on. I'm surprised by that. Man, Strifecrow is making a ton of plays. I would not have made. I'd be a. I'd be. I'd be so happy to see him win here. That learning experience. <laughs> yeah. Oh, not a bad draw at all. You can now wrath for two, mm -hmm. cycle, and be able to put pressure back on. Big moves here for Orange and Strife Crow's really safe play. AKA when Safe Crow comes out. Oh my god. Wow, that's a lot. Um, if you play Horse Rider, hit face. And then you have an opportunity to Doom Hammer. You can definitely set up a three turn lethal here. But he also had a three turn lethal the, tur the turn before, and even if his opponent hit face twice with Savage Roar. Um, he'd still be alive, so this is like, this is still a pretty interesting line, in my opinion, from uh, from Strifeco, where he played really safe. I think he's just thinking the threat of Emperor is too high, mm -hmm. and he had, and he his, maybe his thought was he had enough damage anyways to outlast him because his opponent used two innervates, and he still didn't have like a really big hand size. So, in some ways, I think Strifeco is out, like counting if he can out damage his opponent. All right, well, it looks like uh, Orange is uh, trying to race here. Uh, next turn, he will absolutely have lethal with the Savage Roar. So now it's on Strive Crew yet again to make a play. Let's see. T 10 mana lethal. 10 mana lethal. <laughs> yeah, if only he had the opportunity to extend his mana crystals right now. If he ends up playing removal with the Lava Burst, that gives him... Oh, he's gonna just use the Doom Hammers? Okay. So now he's using the good Doom Hammer time. He says, oh, look, if you have it, you have it. Suicide. <laughs> There's no way he uses 8 damage to clear 2 minions. Oh man, this is the stuff made of nightmares. Where it's like, oh my god, Doom Hammer, 2 Rock Biters, but... It's still gonna be enough here. <laughs> pit Snake! The Pit Snake Dream! That's it. All right. That's game 2 0 for Orange, and Strife Code's line did not pay off at all here. Close, but no yeah. cigar. I, would, he, would he have had it with the Rock Fighter draw on the following turn? I think they drew it at 21. I think it would have been one off lethal. Yeah. I think Strife Code is going to have a really hard time winning that game, regardless of how he sequenced his, uh, his decisions. Yeah, drew it with two innervates early on with Living Roots on turn one. Still pretty tough, uh, and that's that's ultimately why people keep saying Druid is still gonna survive. It's just got many options. Mm -hmm. All right, Assassin's Blade from Orange. Well, that is the first time we've seen that card. Um, it is considered to be a pretty good card, but I feel like it's it's a card that gets amplified so much if you have oil, which, well, let's just say would be a surprise. As surprise, yeah, as that would be a surprise. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not not as much as Crush, uh, but it, it's certainly a really good s a way to synergize your deck. I would actually I assume that um, to take a obscure card here, how, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a card like Go Goblin Auto Barber. That was actually a card that was included with Assassin's Blade um, back when you wanted to make a very burst heavy oil rogue. And you had a lot of flexibility with that card early on to remove things when Zoo was getting really strong. Um, so it, it was it, it's not completely out of the, the question to see a card like that. But I would expect to see Deadly Poison and those kinds of cards. Auto Barber is GVG though. We won't see it here. Oh crap, you're right. What what the hell am I talking about? It is GVG. It's gonna take Sorry, some I'm getting to used to, man. I was trying to be really smart, man, and I. I tried to save you. I, I, you ignored my save, bro. Oh, I, I couldn't hear you. Oh. Damn. Well, all uh, right. I, I'm just gonna AFK and you cast this one. All right. <laughs> no, I think you're good. I think you're good. Uh, it's looking like a pretty decent rogue game here, despite the crazy burst that the uh, the shaman obviously has coming. Actually, I think this is maybe uh, a pretty decent chance to lava burst 
Because if you overload now, you overload turn four, which is fine. You just don't want to overload on turn four. Mm -hmm. And you can consider you can consider lava burst face too if you want. It's a total of eight. You're almost there. Yeah, with the Doom Hammer and Rock Biters, it's fourteen over two turns. Which I mean, realistically, you're probably gonna have two turns to to use it here. But you know, the Farseers here are pretty clutch. Ultimately, yeah. Let's talk about Farseer. Like Farseer is one of those cards when the game came out. It was one of the most non-impressive cards. Like man, this card sucks and constructed. It sucks in arena. But it, decks just got more and more aggressive, and heals are just not being released. Like, if you compare Anti-Killbot to, to Farseer, yeah, it heals for more, but Farseer is, is a 3-3 body, 4-3, with a targeted heal effect, you know? It's, it's so good, but it's mostly so good because heals are just so scarce, which, uh, you know, might be, uh, might be something we can expect out of the, the new expansion. Uh, I think uh, the game would be a bit more interesting if we had a few more Farseer-like cards. Yeah, most of the heals. I mean, we we there were a couple of heals that were released, healing wave, um, that can target. But you're right, there's not many. There's not many heals. It's usually just taunts, and I think that's mm -hmm. because Blizzard generally favors more minion interaction than spells. So it, it that's kind of the, the line that they take there. Uh, speaking of taking specific lines, Orange is just or is the strife go, excuse me, he's just gonna go to the face with the doom hammer. He's got more direct damage. Arcane Golem is also an interesting choice for the Shaman because you lose Crackle, so if you feel like you can make up that damage with Arcane Golem, which costs a little bit more than a Crackle, because Crackle overloads one. You need uh, the blade flurry here? Lose too much. Okay. I'm ready to learn. All right, a pretty aggressive blade flurry. I think playing the Azure Drake wasn't too bad either, because uh, if you draw a backstab, you're probably just going to win, uh, and you're in a pretty dire spot already, so. 4, 7, 11, 13 damage uh, is, is, is available this turn. So, yeah, man, if only that was Crackle, you could roll for lethal. <laughs> I guess you can just hit the face with Doom Hammers and then play Juggler with a hero power. Mm. I like that. The reason being is you still should be able to play out all your stuff. If you really feel like it, you can even play Lava Shock, so that way you have more access to mana the following turn of whatever you draw. Because you'll end up using six mana anyways with the cards and you have seven so you you have an opportunity to pick up like lava burst it's just that if you totem and you get a spell damage i don't think the rogue will kill it i think the rogue has to race to win that's also fair too no i'm saying you can lava shock first light knife juggle and hero power because then you give opportunity to draw into more stuff to play you know because you have six mana worth of stuff in your hand, and you have seven, so most likely the only thing you can draw is a rock biter. But if you pick lava burst up, for example, you can squeeze it in. Phantom knives uh, with the farseer, pretty much exactly the only thing you can do here. And you know, there is rate just there. enough though. Yeah, he's just a little bit out of range again. And uh, sure for it. Is oh, no, not no, no. exactly lethal. That's lethal. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. I, th I think it is. Just because the uh, he's not blocked by yeah, overload. Four, eight. It's ten. nine plus four. You know, it's 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 definitely it. It's definitely it. He's got it. Surfer is uh, Surfer's gonna get that point on the board. And um, I mean, it's looking a bit grim right now for Surfer still. Uh, he still has to win two more against this rogue deck, and we have seen Miracle Rogue um, perform very well so far in the tournament. But what I'm most excited about is seeing what Strife Pro uh, has brought for his own rogue deck. Yeah, that's definitely going to be the one of the interesting things. You know, we brought up at the very beginning of the series, you know, how likely is it that um, the best matchup Rogue has in this series is, is the Mirror. <laughs> because it, it feels like it, it's going to get bullied a little bit by the Druid, because as the uh, combo deck, you're completely dependent on drawing like the Gadget Sands and making sure that you get the right cards, especially if Druid gets the coin. Sure, but um, all these all these slow decks are going to get like blown out at the same time. Like what we saw with Priest was <laughs> savage. 
And uh, <laughs> it's it's probably gonna be very similar with some of the other slow decks. Like I, I don't think Warrior can do too much against Miracle Rogue. Like Warriors is is a lot slower because it can't rely on bouncing back anymore. It has to gradually win. Oh my god, that hand! I'm waiting for the Emperor well, draw. I hope Strifecore actually draws a card. Oh, that's not the card uh, I was I was hoping he would draw. I think he queued the wrong deck. <laughs> It was featured on the front of our entire tournament graphic screen. That's uh, it's a notable Sludge card. That Belcher will not is be a notable exclusion. <laughs> well, uh, surely Strifeco realizes too. Okay, but still, is, the play would be to innervate the Sludge Belcher followed by Wild Growth. If we were to talk talk about the lines here. No, I, w I would just love to see what? Innervate, Innervate, Belcher. To just be the ultimate, like, WTF moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is some completely understandable if Strifeco uh, queued up the wrong list. However, it's up to the rulings of uh, of the admins to see what happens, because there, there's definitely been controversy there. Mm -hmm. um, and if so, that would... If, like, say, for example, Strifeco got the game loss, uh, that would mean the series is over, and we move on to the uh, winner's round two. We'll find out in just a second. Um, I don't think that would warrant it. I think I think it'd be okay to to let him try again. I mean, there there was really no harm done then, and he just have to play with his actual druid list the second time. Yeah, I think the the caveat too to that is um, Trifco had a way better start than Orange as well, so he has potential to get worse start mm -hmm. to that. Right? He had the interface play with the wild growth into something. Yeah, I think it could matter if Orange had more than one deck. Because Strifecrow would know what he's queuing against, and he would mulligan appropriately. But Orange only has one deck. I literally see no no reason to disqualify Strifecrow for picking the wrong deck in this specific scenario. Yeah. Okay. So it looks like uh, we're we're getting information. Just saying it was an honest mistake, and I don't, I, I don't, I don't really see. Uh, I don't see that we're doing any kind of punishment. So it's just a straight up regame. So we're gonna try to queue up again. Uh, but I think Strifeco has to play Druid. He can't just switch the Rogue here. Right, right. That I think with that requirement, it's it's just an honest mistake and it's totally fair. Yeah. Uh, so we'll probably see a little bit of that. If only, you know, we, we would have a system to see which decks qualify for the st standard format in the future. <laughs> we, we, we I'm will. inclined to agree, yes. Mr. Yes. Morrison. Yes. Okay, here we go. The actual druid list includes Scenarius, apparently. That used to be a really good card at 8 mana. At 9 yeah. mana, it's it's seen limited play. Well, you know, it's still a card that has a lot of value if you have a... Like, just in terms of staying alive sometimes, or even being able to buff uh, an existing board. But we haven't seen this card in such a long time. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of like a throwback. Honestly, it's pretty sweet. I, I, I like having it if you're playing a very defensive ramp-style druid, which could be the case here. Maybe Strifeco feels like he plays com one combo when he's playing ramp-style druid. That kind of made uh, a comeback through guys like Deng Shu. It was in vogue for about a week and a half. Nowadays, I think people are going back to the mid-range druid, but for a while, Deng Shu made a pretty good run with that. So... It wouldn't, it wouldn't be completely unheard of to see that kind of style of return. We also see MC Tech from, uh, from Strife Cruise Druid. A lot of right. like uh, just cool, cute cards. Not so sure about the big game, though. I think the big game is a bit phased out in this, in this game. Like, have we actually seen any minions that get big gamed? Besides an enraged Gromash in the whole tournament so far. Right. I mean, you, you mentioned that cool Taskmaster has the chance of activating it. Yeah, I think it's targets. I think it's okay in Warrior. Like, you know, I, I play Warrior with double BGH, double Cruel Task, and I mean, it works all the time. Um, like, nothing to do with with Doctor Boom. I mean, there also are a few other targets. The people playing dragons, like the late game dragons, Nefarian, and Nixia. Oh, that's true. We saw one one of those. And we saw we saw one of the Nixias from uh, from Kibler. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't put it completely useless, but a lot of times you just play it in jungle panther mode and try to uh, and just try to get some tempo onto the board. 
the non-stealth, non-beast jungle panther. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Oh man, that's uh, one of the worst results out of the the mounted raptor. I think the only thing worse than that is probably just like zero attack minion of some sort. Wait, yeah, but is zero attack one 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 mana minion. Um, actually, I don't think so. The only zero attack minions are like shield or oh, shield bears one mana, right? So. Yeah. yeah. That's actually uh, pretty good shield, against Shield Bear is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, there aren't there aren't many. There's like Lightwell on two mana. I think Shield Bear is the only one on one mana. Mm. Well, uh you have the Tomb Pillager here, another underrated card that flew under the radar for League of Explorers. When people started playing with it, getting the benefit off of hitting something a little bit earlier, oh, like even picking up Thorson and Coining out the Thorson, helping you reduce your entire hand. Kind of stuff's awesome. I don't uh, think you Orange can play here it also is thinking about other stuff too. What were you saying, Crip? I don't think you can play the pillager. If you play the pillager, you're you just you just lose versus swipe, right? Just gone. So like spell damage, swipe. Options. Clears. Easy peasy. Mm-hmm. So then what do you want to do then? Uh, like if you play the if you play the Tomb Pillager, you have to double attack into the Drake, which also feels really bad. I think you might have to blade flurry for one. You're gonna trade deadly poison. The deadly poison's a little interesting because one attack weapon plus a uh, or is the same as the, the three attack, but I guess he wanted to be mana efficient because next turn he wants to threaten a flurry with something. Hmm. We have the option to double keeper here if you really want. I mean, keeper hero power is, I think, just as good, what probably. Is it? Double keeper is a bit more tempo and they don't die to blade flurry. Yeah, but there there actually is value to keeping an innervate. You know, you always have this opportunity to like double like double savage gore if your deck calls for it or you know, like like you're you're you, like if you have something like ability to grab tempo with the innervate later on versus mm -hmm. I don't think the second keep of the grove is entirely that useful right now. Plus, you know that uh, you might need to silence something if it ends up becoming a big problem. Van Cleef, for example, is one of them. I don't think you want to double keep or dub that quickly. Oh man, every piece of ramp, like everything. But like so few substance cards being drawn from Strife Crow's deck. Well, uh, I mean, Thor's is still a 5-5. Five five. It's ramp plus a reasonable sized minion. The only thing is, would you trade a lot of your board away? You know, even giving up Innervate to do it, I'm not sure. I think you could uh, Innervate a MC Tech. But it's also pretty nice against Violet Teacher in some cases. Yeah, but I think you want to protect the 5-5 five because five, it's by far the strongest minion onto your board. So you probably would Innervate the hero power out. Because really? the Thorsen has the ability to single-handedly bring you back into relevance. Because right, right now your hand's very weak. I think you can. Yeah, if you want to clear, once you just sack your whole board, you don't have to hear a power for that. So he okay. feels like he'd rather just develop with a uh, clean man efficiency, loading up similar power onto the board. But this plays slightly into Blade Flurry if his opponent had Thanos or a Drake. Because he knows his opponent has coins, so a Drake, coin, Flurry would clear the board. But I think he's okay with that. Mm. The play might be... Um, might be like a Flurry, Eviscerate, so Coin, options. Cleef? I they going Sap, Eviscerate, Coin, Cleef. And that's um, that's an eight eight cleave oh. that gets big game. Big game hunter. <laughs> <laughs> the oh god! Wow, that oh. turned out really well for Strife Crew. Oh my! Oh god. my! Ten mana with the innervate allows the right big game hunter. Sad, too. Oh jeez! That's insane. Uproot! Oh. <laughs> 
Well, Rogue's not gonna run big game, Hunter. He just uses this right in sap. Yeah, but he still has a uh, oh, weapon. Rude. Oh, yeah, he still has the dagger. You're right. He could have flurried for it. But... Oh man, here we go. Uh, so the best card he can pick up is like Fan of Knives, and then, and then get Conceal. Oh, okay. Another chance for a Conceal. Ooh, awkward. Yeah, Drake here, not too bad. Um, okay, you have seven on the board. I don't think that you know the Drake can't really give you lethal in any meaningful way. Yeah, but I guess uh, what I was thinking was Drake gives you opportunity to dig deeper in your deck for something else. But I think either way, he's in a good spot. Thor's in slightly better stats, and you can also. Uh, you know, squeeze in a force of nature or something if you draw it with the next turn. Drake needs to pick up something huge here for no, the, the blade flurry keeps him alive. I think he has yeah. the blade flurry. I think that's better than the Drake. Like, what is the Drake gonna pull? Well, I, I mean, this is also like a play to consider. Like, what's the winning play? But you know, I was thinking at this point, you probably have to just hope for something. But I think he's just banking on the fact that Drew has no gas here. That's plenty of gas. Very. That's that's tons. I mean, that's uh, <laughs> he just filled up with diesel just now. It's pretty much yeah. as, as it gets. I don't see how one Azure Drake is going to bring him back in this game. The the, the druid is twenty HP. It's it's a very long time. This rate is uh, I mean, it saves you from losing. Okay. Okay. Sap and this rate take back tempo completely. But this is like the struggle of Rogue. Uh, he's gonna have to pick up Sprint, but he doesn't have Sprint. He has Gadget Sands. What damage off lethal? No. Oh, he's Wrath got Face. Drawer. What Wrath Face? Nah, he's, he's just gonna Wrath for one Savage Drawer. Oh. Okay. Here we go. Swipe. Perfect. Yeah. Now the Rogue and has to basically win this turn. So good luck with that. Good luck with that. Death Wing. Oh, oh preparation. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, so uh, we were mentioning Crip again. What is the rogue going to have to win to be the deciding factor in the series? It is going to be rogue this time. It's rogue versus rogue. Uh, and Strife Crow has a decisive advantage in knowing a lot of Orange's deck. He knows that it's the Gadget Sand version. He sees Violet yeah. Teachers. I mean, Strife Crow is keeping his rogue deck completely concealed. What if... Strife Code decides to play an aggro rogue. I always mm. do. <laughs> okay. Well, I well, guess not. Not too much of a surprise yet. I mean, we, we, don't, we don't know. I think you'd run Bank Cleave in every rogue deck now. I, I wouldn't run it in like a like a backspace aggro rogue, though. Mm. But there was, there was this time, guys, in the metagame where the Miracle Rogue was such a prominent force that you would run... A miracle rogue killer deck that involved you having like the cold bloods on Argent Squires and uh, South Sea Deckhands so that you could kill Miracle before they draw too many cards. Yeah, uh, and, and that was like a huge, like an eighty percent win rate against that deck because you just designed to kill it. Doesn't look like it's that case at all. It looks like, looks like a very similar deck. Additional decks. Oh, maybe not. Sprint's a little bit strange. Sprint is res reminiscent of Oil Rogue. Yeah, yeah. Sprint does not make the miracle list. Sprint is strictly an oil. And if it is, then uh, where's the oil, bro? Is Shrifeco queuing up the wrong deck again? I don't know, Crip. Well, what if, what if he just thinks Deadly Poison is oily enough? That could be a possibility as well. But without oil, you lose a lot of the range of which makes which is what makes oil rogue a threat in the first place. Yeah. Unless Strife Crow, the only way you can legitimately get oil is to burgle your opponent and get your oh. Oh. Yeah. Not I'm a little bit surprised that Strife Crow chose to attack with the dagger um, and not develop Farseer. But in oh, this, now he's preemptively attacking yeah, three drop. He's threatening the same the same damage on the board. Oh, one less, because if you save the weapon, but that's still quite good. Yeah, but if he developed, like, the three-drop, your opponent has to answer it 
with like backstab, and then even then if he didn't, you still have the ability to equip the dagger now. And how do you respond to this Violet Teacher immediately without giving up Eviscerate? You don't have to respond immediately. You have a Blade Flurry now. And I think well, you, just... didn't, you didn't know that, Crip. Yeah. <laughs> Going into this turn. Yeah. Well, you're right, you're right. I mean, mm. uh, I think his options weren't great, and he just took an option that kind of worked, and he drew out well enough that it doesn't really matter anymore. Okay. I mean, it's, it's completely, it's, it's fair. I mean, he had one of these things where Farseer does have good tempo options. If you're not, like, if you're playing it just as a vanilla 3-3 three, three minion, no different than my control tech on turn 3, then maybe he feels like he needs to get stronger value off these cards, uh, and then he can try to climb back to the mid-game. Or if he feels like he needs to use some of these cards because he knows it's Miracle Rogue and he has to play a little bit differently. One thing for sure, though, is, like, if you know that your opponent has like the Gadgets and Conceal deck, you have to be able to kill it off the moment they drop it and pass the turn. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to like give up this weapon if you don't have to, because then you can always threaten a flurry clear with mm. something. Uh, looks like he's going to use an Eviscerate. I wonder if he's going to use a Conceal as well. I probably would not do that. But... Um... There's merit to it, but I think you you have such good tools right now that you're okay not doing it. Mm -hmm. It also gets even much better next turn. Well, and this is uh, like every turn you you keep Violet Teacher on the board, it gets increasingly better with it. So yeah, this is a pretty decent turn for uh, for the Blade Flurry action. You can curve out with the Farseer or make a new weapon. Yeah, the Farseer is better onto the board. Um, your opponent does have a deadly poison dagger, but you know it just feels like Shrefko is just slightly behind every single time, and he even uh, he even has an extra coin. But he, I mean, he's gonna have to Drake and coin eviscerate. Maybe that's why that's he felt good, cool from the beginning. Yeah, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. But it's like as soon as you pick up a gadget sand. With two conceals, there's no answer to it. Backstab uh, SI is pretty though. good. Here. I guess you can back backstab fan of knives to draw and then SI. Well no, you would just fan of knives and SI, wouldn't you? Oh keep the backstab? Yeah, that's pretty reasonable as well. Actually I kinda like that a little bit more. Because then you, you, you can keep the backstab for the extra card draw and, and even damage to a minion. Ha, this guy's but then he doesn't then he has to give up his, uh, his dagger, which he doesn't want to mm. do. Sprint time, or would you develop the board? Well, the board development wouldn't really be that strong. But um, sprint would just have to do with what's left in your deck. And... That's a call that Strifecrow would have mm. to make. So the immediate thing that sticks out to me is that Strifecrow probably just plays a more board-centric, quote, oil rogue. Like, maybe he plays two shred. Oh, sorry, you can't play shred. You're taking the shredders out. So what do you replace it with? Two Tomb Pillagers, two Vada Teachers. You're missing Lotheb. You're missing the Antique Heal Bot. Is he playing something really obscure uh, that we're not really thinking about? I don't know, man. Rogue, Rogue definitely has some interesting tools from expansions, mm -hmm. but not exactly directly obvious of how you translate it. Well, one thing we haven't seen is like the the shadow step charger abuse. So that could right. be that is something that works with sprint. I think a little bit better because you need more cards to combo, but your burst potential is higher. Hmm. Can't really board clear with that fan of knives and the Thanos because he doesn't have enough mana. I guess you sprint now. Yeah, I like the sprint here. Another sprint. Well, there's some of the charger Salsi. abuse. Uh, maybe he's playing Salsi Cold Bloods. That could be actually a thing, too. Mm -hmm. Like we were mentioning earlier. Tack to the face. Putting some pressure back on the opponent. Really letting him keep the board. Because one of the things about Oil Rogue in the past was that if you ever leave up a minion, that's plus three damage potential that can come your way that you have to answer. But now, without the threat of the Tinker Sharp Sword Oil, 
maybe you can just leave minions floating a little bit more. So I like this adaptation of playstyle from Strife. Wow. Grade. That trade. I mean, what does I, it say when your opponent attacks at the face and, pick, and you know refuses a value trade? I, I really thought that you'd go all out face and play conceal there because Strife Crow would need exactly spell damage, deadly poison, blade flurry, and he's already played deadly poison and blade flurry and one spell damage, so that would be like super unlikely. But uh, yeah, I mean that's exactly what Strife Crow has as it so happens. So as it turns <laughs> out, uh, Orange is actually. Uh, Doing very well. Yeah, it's a it's a very defensive uh, play here, which ends up being okay. Stri Strife Crow is also in a pretty good spot where he's gonna have a minion and Orange doesn't, and that's gonna ultimately mean that uh, Orange is very far behind. He's just got things that synergize with other other cards in the deck, but he needs those directly. Like everything right now doesn't do anything. He can. He can flurry the Thanos down. That's basically it. This this use of coin and the fact that we've seen a second sprint already is very indicative that he is not running auctioneers. Huh. So flurry and then just play Assassin's Blade and just start getting to work. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Assassin's Blade's twelve damage. Oh. Speaking of Assassin's Blades, <laughs> well, I mean, that is... Strefker is a lot better because he has the Deadly Poison. Yeah, I like it. Uh, you can also squeeze in a Prep Sprint. Hmm. Prep Sprint is 4 mana, and that allows you to Assassin's Blade and Deadly Poison. Yeah. I like it, and Looks that... Good. Also gives you opportunity to potentially find lethal in the following turns, because Assassin's Blade is 15 damage over two turns with Flurry, and the the South Sea gives you even more uh, range here to finish the game. I mean, why not start with a weapon pre-oiled? That's probably the logic uh, when you play Assassin's Blade. It's a little better than just one oil. Oh yeah, true. You get more durability, which is. Mm -hmm. All right, well, two more swings, and uh, Strife Crow's going to close out the gap that he needs. <laughs> so he's got six damage, and this is the pain that every Miracle Road player has felt at one time in their career. Is that lethal? That's one off. Yep, one off. You can fan for lethal. Fan of Knives gives you an opportunity yep. to draw onto any other damage. I think he's used both of his rates, though. I don't know if there is any other damage left. I think with, with two sprints and, a, and an Azure Drake already gone, uh, Strife Crow's deck is probably very light right now. You could be right. Pay attention, class. He might have he might have something though. We'll see. He's got five cards remaining. We have yet to, get to see something like his own Van Cleef. I'm ready to live. One more damage does the trick, and it's just a sap. So I, I'd say you just go for some of the damage here. I think uh, Orange can definitely win this game. He also, uh, I'm sure, has a fairly light deck. It's certainly not as light as Striker. He hasn't sprinted at all. It's probably about 10 cards. But with uh, oh, 14, wow, that's a bit more than I thought. But he has uh, a prep, two coins, and two one-mana spells. Um, this is this is where magic can happen. This is where miracles take place. <laughs> He's got access to a ton of mana this turn. Oh, he gets it! Oh, you gotta start now. You gotta start. You gotta you go, 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 go. Cue the epic sax music, Crip. Oh, oh another trap. He's got his whole deck. Does he? Does he have lethal in his deck? Is now the question. Thanos is like extra damage on the blade flurry. It's seven damage right now. He just needs four, eight more. And with Thanos, with giving him potential range into things, he's gonna conceal again. Oh my goodness. Two saps. These are bad draws. These are bad draws. I think he just prepped into a prep, didn't he? Oh no, no, that's when it just went off. No, no, no. He coined into the uh, the conceals. I think he's thinking about whether or not he wants to flurry now to get more damage in, because he he has to he has to spend his mana. Keep drawing, yeah. Keep drawing. Oh no, it's Great. it's going pretty badly here. Uh, it looks like, yeah, it looks like he, he doesn't have it. He doesn't have any more damage. Oh, so he's going to no. have to draw as if 
Uh, the striker can't kill him next turn, but we know that's uh, that's very far from the case. No, we used him prep to backstab. Ah! Oh, oh man, the orange well, really fight hard, but running out of time and running out of turns. That's gonna wrap it up here. Had he not prepped into backstab, he would have lost with a giant, enormous Van Cleef. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that he had access to 18 mana that turn. Like, he, yeah. I think 10 plus 2 coins plus 2 preps. Yeah. That was oh. like a 2020 uh -uh. Van Cleef. That and he would have died immediately after. But still, he would have had it. He would have done it. He would have built him. <laughs> All right, but it is it is Strife Crow's last point. Strife Crow does advance to the winner's round. Orange drops the loser's round. Uh, as we've mentioned earlier in the tournament, that um, the losers are going to be playing off stream. So uh, that does mean uh, Kibler will be playing Orange off stream, uh, while we will be seeing uh, the winner's rounds uh, coming right up. I think we're going to start straight from the top. So uh, coming up next, I believe, will be... Uh, Trump versus uh, Tice, I think. And then it will be uh, Forsen versus Strife Crow, followed by the decider matches, which, well, have yet to be decided. That's right, that's right. Uh, we have some people playing the lower bracket as well. We'll update you when we come back. In the meantime, guys, we're going to take a, a quick break. I want to give a shout-out to Geek Fuel as well as the, uh, the Curse Network for being able to sponsor us at this event. Thanks for following along with us, uh, and we're going to be back real soon with more action here at the Curse Trials. <laughs> 